In this video, I'm going to show you the best actions that you probably didn't know about in Reaper. Now, the next action I want to show you is to move the edit cursor to the left edge. Now, when you're editing in Reaper, you're probably going to do this a lot. You're working on a section, you hit play. You go to the next section over here, you want to hit play, but you want it to start right over here. You'll put your cursor over here, hit play, and keep working through your song, editing it. Always moving the cursor around here to play it from there. Make your edit and play it from here. But it's kind of a pain having to move your cursor manually over here each time. And luckily, there's an action to do this for us. Go to the Actions menu, Show Action List, type into the filter Edit Cursor Left. And there's an action right here that's going to move the edit cursor to the left edge of the visible arrange view. Let's hit a keyboard shortcut to this. I'm going to use the C key, but of course, you can use any keyboard shortcut you prefer. So now, as I'm working through my song, and I want to hit play, it starts from over here, move over here, do some editing, hit that keyboard shortcut, it moves the edit cursor over there, ready to be played. Do some more editing over here, hit the keyboard shortcut, hit play. It plays from here without having to manually move the play cursor over here. And we can make this quicker with a custom action. So let's delete the keyboard shortcut, go to new custom action, type in play, we'll choose transport play, and create a custom action that's going to move the edit cursor to the left edge, and then play. Save it, shows up over here, hit the keyboard shortcut to this, and now we get play to work on our song, move over to edit it, hit that keyboard shortcut, it moves the edit cursor to the left side and automatically starts playing. Work over here, hit that keyboard shortcut, and it always starts playing from the left edge of our range window. Work over here, do the same thing. It always plays just the window we're seeing. And there's also an action for MIDI. So if we open up the MIDI editor, we're probably working and editing our song. We want it to play from the left side of our screen. Open the action list. We'll choose the section for the MIDI editor. Here's the same action in the MIDI editor. Again, Get a keyboard shortcut to this. And we use the same one because it's in a different section, the MIDI editor. So again, we can work through our song, editing it, hit that keyboard shortcut, and moves the play cursor over here. Move over here, does the same thing, then hit play. Or again, we can create a custom action. We'll delete this keyboard shortcut and make it a custom action and add play to it. Give it a name and save it. And it shows up right here and give this the keyboard shortcut. And now it's gonna play back when we hit that keyboard shortcut on the left side of our MIDI editor. Edit over here. Do the same thing. And it always plays starting on the left side of a MIDI editor or the piano roll. It's pretty helpful not having to move our edit cursor to the left side each time. The next action I want to show you is to resize the mixer with its sends and effects. Let's open up our mixer. And we see by default, we're just seeing this information. Here's our faders, our effects, pans, and so on. But we're not seeing our effects individually on the track or our sends. And if I right click over here, we can see over here, we should be seeing them, but only when size permits. Our inserts and our sends and so on. So right now, we're not seeing them. But we can, if we put our cursor up here, 
see the cursor changes, then we can grab it and reveal the things you want to see. Our effects plugins, our ascends, adjusting the height of each. But you can see I'm only doing it on one track. We probably want to do it on all the tracks. And we can do that by adding in a modifier. On PC, it's control, and on Mac, it's command. Hold it down, go to any track where we see this cursor, and pull it down, and they all move together. So you can now see our effects and our sends, or anything else we want to reveal in the mixer. Now, if we don't want to do it on all tracks, as we saw before, we could do it individually like this, or we could do it on groups. Let's select these tracks, add in another modifier. So on PC, it's all control, and on Mac, it's option command. And just do the same thing. And now, it's only gonna be affected by the tracks we selected, these three. So you can readjust it just for these three tracks, just to see what we wanna see. Do the same with these two, just adjust what we wanna see. But again, we could do it individually, just by grabbing one or all tracks using control on the PC or command on the Mac. And that adjusts all the tracks together. So we can see exactly what we wanna see. In this situation, our plugins and our sends. And if we don't wanna see that, just drag it to the top to just see this info. The next action I wanna show you is to normalize the loudness of items. So the project set up here with a bunch of different musical pieces. Let's hear them. As you can tell, they're very different volumes or loudnesses, or how loud they appear. But we can make them more even by using this action. Go to the action menu, show action list, and type into the filter, normalize. There's a bunch of actions that could do this, but this one is my favorite, as it'll normalize items based on peak, RMS, or LUFs, which we could choose after we trigger the action. So let's add a keyboard shortcut to this. Again, you can use any keyboard shortcut you prefer. So now, we can just select all these items by lassoing them, hit that keyboard shortcut, and this dialog shows up. And we can normalize all these items by peak, true peak, LUFS, RMS, or LUFS integrated, which is my favorite to make the loudness more equal. In other words, it'll appear that they're all the same volume. So let's choose this one, and let's set this to minus 14 LUFS. Of course, you could change it to whatever you prefer. But either way, it should wind up more even. Now there's two options to choose from. We could normalize each item separately or together with common gain. This is gonna keep all the items in relation to each other, which is the opposite of what we want. We want each one to change separately to a LUFS minus 14 level, or any level you choose. Hit okay. Notice they all changed. Here's before and here's after. So now they should sound more even. And they do. Again, before. This one is super loud. This one is super quiet. And after. It's a great way to even out recordings that were made at completely different times. Now, I wouldn't use this on a vocal track unless you're evening out vocals that were recorded at different times or different studios. But I wouldn't use this on a line by line basis that was recorded at the same time, as it's not going to sound as balanced as you think. But by using this action, we can normalize these items to sound more closely in loudness to each other. 
Now, because of the length of this video, I've divided it into multiple parts. Check out part three next. So those are the best actions that you probably didn't know about in Reaper. Hope you learned something, hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo boys, let's go.